And that, that East region is interesting because three final four teams from last year. Now, obviously, FAU in a little different place, San Diego State in a little different place than they were last year. UConn looks as strong or probably even better than last year when they won the national title. Yeah, it, it is amazing how this bracket. Let, let's let's start with the East. Let's let's do that, James. We're going to go region by region. We're going to find you some upsets as you are filling out your bracket. I was looking at your potential upsets. We agree on a lot of them. I'm a little worried right. about how many we agreed on throughout this bracket. But obviously, I, I as much as I love my friends in the land, Florida at Stetson and and Donnie Jones, former University of Florida assistant coach Billy Donovan Tree sprouting i don't have faith in the hatters to do anything against uconn so i think uconn's gonna go through but that florida atlantic northwestern game I, it really does feel like they did get the the if you look at the the vegas odds a lot of eight nine pickups like they they did yeah. that right they got the eights and nine matchups pretty right yeah the eights and nines like you said the matchups i thought were great uh you mentioned in your opening about nebraska texas a m that one's fun for a lot of reasons you got this one which should be really close on paper mississippi state michigan state i think that's a really fun matchup that was one that i i like struggled for a, quite a while to pick who i thought was going to win but i still think that the selection committee got a couple of these where they they just kind of threw it threw it together like fau was a non-conference champion in the regular season and the postseason for the ninth mm. best conference in college basketball. They have three quad three or quad four losses, and yet they seemingly just weren't punished for them because they scheduled well in the non-conference for who they are. So right. that was interesting to me, but I do think that this game is going to be really, really good. You've got FAU, who we know who they've got. They're the same team that made a deep run last year, same coach, running things in Dusty May, one of the hottest names on the coaching trail right now, against a Northwestern team who has already knocked off a Purdue this season. They've won some big games, but they haven't had the consistency through the Big Ten schedule that would have gotten them a higher seed. So these are going to be two fun teams to watch go head-to-head -head, because we don't really know what we're going to get from either of them uh, fully until we see it tip off. So – the, the CBS crew brought up this game, and I thought it was interesting. Auburn, Yale, a 413 game as, as a potential upset. Now, we just watched Auburn rip through the SEC tournament. They destroyed Florida in the in the final on Saturday. But not gonna lie, Auburn's been inconsistent all year. You know, Johnny Broom's awesome when, when he's on, he's one of the best players in college basketball. Yale, by the way, wins on a tip in yeah. at the end of the, the Ivy League tournament. Like buzzer beater tip in. If that doesn't go in, they lose and they're not here. But that's one that that does seem like you got one team that's as hot as can be. But I always wonder, and, and we'll talk about this when we get to NC State as well. When you make that run through the conference tournament, do you do you get, you know, lose your legs a little bit? Is it better to just kind of lose early and then rest up for the NCAA tournament? I would say if, if I'm Bruce Pearl and I'm trying to put the best shine on this as I can, no, no, no. We're now playing our best basketball. There's nothing to worry about here. Yeah, and for this Auburn team, the real difference is their depth. This is a team that brings guys off the bench, that play big minutes, that have big scoring production. And so I think they're a, a little bit less of a risk to get caught in one of these early games where – they have to go out there and put it all on the floor against a mid-major. Maybe Yale gets hot from three. Maybe their offense gets clicking. But what this Auburn team can do is play in a variety of ways. They've got so many guys they can bring off the bench. They can keep guys fresh that I think that they're going to be able to survive this despite playing into Sunday. Let's not forget, Yale had to play on Sunday as well. So it's not like one team comes in with a lot more rest than another. That maybe would sway me just a little bit. So I think that Auburn pretty comfortable here, just given the way that they played in the SEC tournament and the fact that, like I said, they've got more depth than anyone uh, coming into this tournament to deal with a mid-major where they, they can just go just, I mean, basically platoon swap if they want to and yeah. keep fresh faces out there against whatever team they're facing.
Which, which is the ideal for Bruce Pearl. That is, if you followed Bruce Pearl teams through the years, that is exactly what he wants to do is throw, throw waves of players at you and just run you up and down the court. So if you want to follow your team in the NCAA tournament, there is no better way than game time. Whether your team got sent to Omaha, to Spokane, to Brooklyn, to Indianapolis, to Memphis, it doesn't matter because they have tickets to every regional site on game time. They have tickets to every first weekend site, every second weekend site. They have tickets to the final four in Glendale, Arizona on game time. Use the the code staples. You get $20 off your first purchase. When you're scrolling through, you can take a look at exactly where your seats would be in the arena. Now, if you're going to Pittsburgh, the pictures are of the hockey arena because that's where the Penguins play. So you'll have to imagine a basketball court there, but you will see exactly what your vantage point would be a couple more taps and those tickets are yours game time makes it so easy to get last minute tickets all you do is you find your site you find your seat tap tap the tickets are yours so it does not matter where your team got placed you can go follow them with game time and remember use the code staples for twenty dollars off your first purchase I believe you and I may have agreed on this one. The 7-10 matchup in the East, Washington State and Drake. Yeah. And Washington State, one of the great stories of the college basketball season, the final year of the Pac-12. Uh, they were one of the best teams in the league. They get an at-large. This is an interesting one. So if we're going odds, Washington State's only a one-and-a-half-point favorite. So this is... This is about as close as you can get in terms of a matchup. And I just, I feel like Drake can win this one. Yeah, I, I'd go so as far, so far as to say, I think Drake will win this. I think that they should be favored in this game. If you look at their run of form, you look at the players that they have, uh, that Drake team has been really solid all season long. And down the stretch, they really got it figured out. They were clicking on all cylinders. They knocked off Indiana State to win the Missouri Valley. And then when you get to the finish line, you look at the other side and you say, what is Washington State doing to close the season? Well, they're losing to bubble teams in the Pac-12. They had a couple of bad losses down the stretch. They are only three and three in their last six. So you look on one side of the team that maybe faded after getting that big upset win against Arizona. And on the other side, a, a red hot mid-major team that has the star power, that has the, the coach. Who, who has gotten all the attention for what he's been able to do there. And so I think that Drake is very well positioned to take this game as the 10 seed and move on to that next round. Yeah, and I do wonder, like, if their coach is a, is a candidate at other places, how much does that change this? And uh, we can talk, like, Scott Drew's name has come up with Louisville, and, and, and we can talk about that when we talk about Baylor, but Kyle Smith's in a situation where – much like Jonathan Smith as Oregon State's football coach last yeah. year, you knew because of what happened to the conference that you're probably looking to get out, especially now mm -hmm. that you have the opportunity, that you've had a really good year. Let's be real. The last time Washington State was in the NCAA tournament, Tony Bennett left for Virginia. Like This is kind of how this goes, and especially now. So I do wonder how much of it is your coach – might have other things going on, other irons in the fire. Now, I, I realize these guys can compartmentalize, but I feel like that's a that's a tough situation. Yeah, and De Darian DeVries is another guy who could be in that conversation. So this matchup could yeah. uh, really just put to bed who, who, who is more focused on the other side now. But uh, I, I think that most coaches are able to compartmentalize it. They're able to stay focused on the task. They've got all these assistants for a reason. They're the ones doing a lot of the advanced scouting. And so I don't think that it impacts the game plan in any real way. What I think that it impacts more so is players' ability to lock in and focus. We know that every, every good player, every good coach will tell you that they lock out the noise, that they don't listen to what anyone's saying, but that's just not reality in this day and age. We know that they're on social media. We know that they're scrolling through, uh, that they're getting text messages, phone calls, asking them what's going on. So when your coach's name is out there in a public space being mentioned for jobs, you're going to get that. You're going to have people asking you questions and it might start to make you wonder about your future. You start trying to make decisions on what you're going to do 
uh, at the end of the season? Are you going to enter the transfer portal? Are you going to declare for the draft? Are you going to follow your coach where he goes? Who's going to be on the roster with you next year? You start thinking about these things, and then it becomes harder to perform on the court more than it is to prepare for the game. Meanwhile, Dan Monson of Long Beach State has already been fired. And he's in yeah. the tournament. <laughs> yeah. Dan, Dan Monson, by the way, you know, the famously got Gonzaga off, off the ground, then went to Minnesota. You know, has kind of been, been everywhere. But, yeah, he was fired Monday at Long Beach State. They win their conference tournament, and now they're in the tournament. <laughs> yeah, it, it's going to be crazy. That's, that's maybe the most fun storyline to follow. And it might be a short-lived one. They got to play uh, Arizona in the first round so no easy easy out there but it would be so much fun if they were able to pull off an upset and make some kind of run here and just make us continue talking about the fact that this guy was fired but is having the best success in school history that would be just about the perfect ncaa tournament storyline well before we leave the east region we did just take a little detour into the west but before we leave the east region uh, looking ahead into you know what we think will happen as we get to the weekend, I don't see a lot of opportunities un- unless we get an upset here, unless like UAB beats San Diego State or Yale beats Auburn. But I don't see a lot of opportunities to take away the chalk. The, the, the game that I would really like to see if chalk holds in this one is Iowa State, Illinois in the Sweet 16 next week. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Terrence Shannon Jr. is awesome, scoring in bunches, and, and TJ Otzelberger has just done an incredible job at Iowa State. Like that would be a great game to get into the Elite Eight, and a team coming out of a game like that is a team that could compete with UConn for a spot for the Final Four. Yeah, I agree. That's going to be a really fun matchup. I think uh, UConn and Auburn also would be a really fun matchup uh, that we would potentially get to see. I think. This, this bracket gets really fun at the start, and then maybe there's a little middle lull where we just kind of wait for the big, the big names to face off against each other in that second weekend there. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here so you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on 3. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On 3 Sports YouTube channel.